Hey, welcome back to Tuesday Afternoon. Everybody, it's Tuesday and welcome back. Today we're going to be making boxy boo. You're going to need original Sculpty polymer clay and some foil. We're going to take that foil and shape it into the upper and lower sides of the jaw, which are his head. <laughs> we're going to just make a general shape of the jawline and then we're going to cover that in polymer clay. I'm going to roll it out real thin and then I'm going to smooth it onto the surface of the foil. Next after that we're going to do an indented area where the gums are and then I'm just going to put a thin layer of polymer clay there and build up the gum area. Once I kind of get the gums how I want them I'm going to come back in and delineate where the hairline is. You're working in the head keep in mind that this head can't be too heavy because it's going to be on a spring and that will change the balance of the figure. So while you are building up the clay, keep that in mind that you're going to have to balance this weight out on the figure. Here I'm building up where his teeth are going to go and I'm making all these little details to give it a realistic look. I want little edges and bumps in it. You don't want any sharp edges. You want them nice and smooth, but you also want an organic look. When you're working on the teeth, make sure that you pay attention to the character model and the placement of the teeth. The top teeth and then the bottom teeth, they're staggered back and forth from the top jaw to the bottom jaw. So just pay attention to that as you go. I recommend marking the placement of the teeth on both sides of the jaw before you put in the actual teeth. You don't want to get the teeth down on one side and then realize that they're not staggered correctly. So just mark the teeth where you want them. Once you get both sides done, then you can put your teeth in. I'm starting to work on the back part of the mouth, the soft palate, and if you notice there's a curved area back in the back of Boxy Boo's mouth, and I'm just trying to create that area. Here I'm putting in the ridges, and I'm putting in soft lines, so the paint can pool and collect in those areas and give it a, a realistic appearance. I want them to have almost like an animal-like look to the top of the palette. If you notice, a lot of animals have these little ridged areas. And here I'm just going to use polymer clay for his eyes. You can use glass if you want, but I'm just going to use polymer clay. Here I'm putting in the detailing in his hair or fur, whichever it is. And I'm just going to have it little details of it hanging over the gum line. And I'm starting out farthest away and then I'm layering it on top of each other so it looks like the hair is laying correctly on the figure. Next I'm going to start the lower jaw and I made a dip in the area where I want his throat to be. If you look at the character model there's this hole or dip where his throat is and I just recreated that. It's very easy to do. Just make sure that it's thin like I said before because of the balancing issues and I made sure that the teeth are staggered correctly and it's the correct number of teeth. Next I'm just going to build up the areas of the gum line again and try to create that organic appearance. I was really excited to make Boxy Boo and have been looking forward to making him. I have a few other characters from Project Playtime I want to make so look for those in the future. I just, I'm very excited about the next character I'm going to make. I really want to make it. And I also want to revisit some other franchises, but 
this has been really cool. If you like my content, please subscribe. If you have any questions, please let me know below. Next, I'm going to kind of start building up the hair. And then I'm going to align the jaws to see if they fit together well. Fingers crossed. Fingers crossed, people. Hope it looks good. I think one of my favorite parts was actually making all the detailed hair. I just really enjoyed that. It made them come alive, kind of like when you're painting. It adds such life to them. Like if you can add in the movement of the hair, it's a really nice touch. Next here, I'm going to put some holes in for some wire. This is just kind of to keep it aligned while I'm building up the clay. It doesn't really even do anything for the support system. It's just kind of a way to keep it together while I secure it with clay. I'm just going to smooth it out with the tool and then I'm going to put some clay in the back of the throw also so it supports it. You're adding the support area of the gum. Remember that you want to have the similar texture to the gum line. You want to continue the gums up and onto the other side of the head. So just do that. I'm going to go ahead and add the hair area onto the back and I'm going to put a hole actually on the back of the head where I'd like the spring to connect to. I wasn't too sure when I was doing that in the beginning where I wanted the hole to be, but the best location for it to accurately portray the character model is in the back of the head. If you want, you can put it in the bottom. It would probably balance easier if it was in the bottom segment of the jaw, but if you want it to be like the character in the game, it connects to the back of the head. Here I'm making his feet. We just made his teeth. His teeth are super easy to make, so I don't really need to explain that. And his feet are just a square of polymer clay with hair added. Here I'm adding his claws in, and I'm going to actually stick that on, and I'm going to add some polymer clay around each of those claws and make them look like hair. Some quick notes about Boxy Boo's feet. I'm going to have it all polymer clay. I'm not going to put any foil in between because I want it to be weighted. I want it to help balance his body out, give a little bit of weight to the bottom portion. Of course, make sure that it's not too thick because when you bake it, it won't bake all the way through. Next, we're moving on to his hands and he has four fingers and we're just going to stick them on. If you look at the character model, there are delineated areas where his fingers are. So when you are putting in his hair, make sure that it has a dip where each individual finger connects to the palm of the hand. And this is pretty easy. It's just basically doing the hair texture and then you add the claws on and you're going to build the clay around it so it looks like the hair goes around the claws. You're also going to need to put a hole in the side where you want the wire to be inserted into. I went ahead and I baked the hands and feet again and if you want to you can do this I'm going to add little details of longer hairs you don't have to do this it's just a little detail that I thought would be kind of cool on the sculpture and as you can see it kind of adds a neat effect I can add kind of some movement with the hair next I'm going to make the box I want the box to be extra light so I'm going to just use some cardboard and then cover it with Bristol paper. If you can see inside of that box, I made a cylinder shaped torso that would help keep Boxy Boo together. So basically it's just his torso inside the box. I took foil and shaped it into a cylinder shape and then I covered that in polymer clay. I made a hole in the top where his top spring is going to go that heads up to his head and I put a hole on the side of his body where his arms go and then what I did was I took the box and I made holes in the bottom and then I pierced them through and I set the cylinder shape that hadn't been baked yet into the the box. After you pierce the holes through 
the box and it goes into your clay cylinder. You're going to remove it, clean up any edges, and then you'll take that cylinder and bake it in the oven for the correct time. Once out of the oven, let it cool down and then you can hot glue it to the bottom of the box. Make sure the holes line up and also the holes for the arms as well. Next we're going to make the crank. You're going to want to put on some protective glasses to cut your wire. And I'm just going to use my wire cutters after I cut it to bend it to the correct shape. After I get the shape I want, I'm going to make the handle out of polymer clay and bake it in the oven. You're going to want to make four polymer clay screws. They're very easy to make. These are located on the box and then they're going to be located on his jaw. Very easy to make. After you get that done, you'll put it in the oven. Next, we're going to be making the star. I'm going to make a template using parchment paper. I'm going to lay the parchment paper over the side where I want the box, and then I'm going to just draw out the star. After I do that, I'm going to take my template I made, lay it onto the rolled out piece of clay, and then I'm just going to use a tool and cut it out. I'm going to remove the parchment paper and then just shape the star how I want it, using a tool to kind of make the pulls in the star. And you can even use plastic wrap to get those fine little pulls so it looks like a balloon. After that, I'm going to put the star, the four screws, and if you want, if you haven't done it yet, you can put the crank in the oven. After everything is done baking, now we can go ahead and paint all the other parts. I'm going to use acrylic paint, yellow, red, white, and I might even need to touch up the blue. But the crank, the rod part is yellow, the handle is red, and I'm going to take some pastel and I'm going to blush it on just to give it some detail work. And I'm going to use silver metallic paint and paint the screws. I'm going to use hot glue and I'm going to glue them on. And I might even want to add a little bit of a patina look with black pastel. After you're done painting the star and adding pastel to it, you're going to want to use hot glue and glue it on. It's like the box is pretty much done. Next, we're going to put the crank on. I'm just going to put a hole where I think the crank needs to be. And then I'm going to insert the crank in to see if I like the position and if it's correct length. I went ahead and glued on a little piece of polymer clay that I had previously baked to go around the crank. I'm going to touch up the paint and then that's done. Next, we're going to paint the inside of the mouth. All it is is just red paint that I've thinned down. I wanted to get into all the little crevices. And after this, that layer of paint, I'm going to move on to painting the head red. I'm going to let all this dry all together, the feet, the head, and the hands. And then I'm going to come back in and paint the eyes white. We're going to do another layer of paint on the gums. This is just red and white paint mixed together making a pink color. We're going to do it a little bit splotchy to give it a realistic appearance. We want that red paint to come through. Get a little bit of red paint or pink paint onto the teeth. That's okay. Just wipe it off. Next we're going to add some burnt umber onto the fur. Or hair and this is gonna be watered down and it's gonna go into all the little crevices I recommend either using burnt umber or brown don't use black because the black is gonna be too harsh we want it to blend with the red paint really well and we're gonna now work on the teeth which is a little bit of yellow and a little bit of white mixed together you could go with all yellow but I kind of wanted a realistic appearance to it so I went with this. Next we're going to paint the pupil of Boxy Boo black and I'm going to paint this actually two layers of this black paint just making sure that the pupil is large enough for Boxy Boo. The soft pastel I'm using here is burnt sienna red and black. I'm going to shave it off onto my tray and I'm going to use a brush. Apply it to the gums and teeth to give it a very spooky look. Go into all those little crevices, go around the gum lines and along the top of the teeth. Pastel makes the teeth 
and the gums look so good. Make sure you get it along the line where the gum starts so it kind of delineates the hair from the gums. And then I'm going to come back in and I'm going to put it into all the little ridges inside the mouth on the palette. If you like my content, please like and subscribe. I'd really appreciate it. Let me know what you'd like to see next. I want to revisit some of the other franchises, but I have another character in mind that I would like to make from Project Playtime. So I'm really looking forward to that. If you have any questions, please let me know below. You're going to also want to take that pastel and go around the eye. And that really makes Boxy Boo's eye pop. Look at all the little detail in the ridges. And if you see an area that the paint has come off, then just go ahead and touch it up. We want to do that before we start putting on the finish. You're going to want to make sure that the paint is fully dried before you put on the varnish finish. We're going to apply that to the eyes, the teeth, the gums, and the claws. Next, get your springs ready. I recommend buying your springs ahead of time. You don't want to be making your own springs. And you're just going to glue everything in place. You've already made the holes and you're going to use hot glue to attach everything together. It should be balanced pretty well if you made it like I did. And have your fingers crossed, really. What I did was I went ahead and put the arms into place and then I used some pliers and I adjusted the springs and I bent them to be kind of in the position I would like him to hold. Once I have the springs adjusted, I'm going to use hot glue, push it in where I would like his arms to be, and I'm going to kind of adjust where his hands are and then I'm going to glue them onto the springs. He's looking pretty good right now. I can't believe it. We are on to the finishing touches of Boxy Boo. I'm kind of sad to see it end. You're going to just go ahead and glue the screws onto the jaw. And there it is. It's all done. Ta-da! Let me know what you think of the sculpture below. I'm so excited to add it to my collection of many, many, many game sculptures. And I can't wait to make more. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a fantastic day. And if you end up making this sculpture, let me know below. I'd love to see it and I'd love to hear about it. Bye.